Today we get to go back to working in the forward locker. I don't have the best view of a map, but the compression post that we were able to bond in the other week, it has this front section here going by the settee. But on the other side in this forward locker, which is going to be, well, where the heater's sitting right now, uh, the anchor, the windlass will be there and the anchor chain will come through, but on the back of it... You need to come up here for that. Yeah. And on the back section here, you can see where Matt has removed the paint, sanded it, just gave it an acetone wipe, and that is where the backing plate of the compression post is going to sit. It, it is tight. Um, <laughs> I've had to sand off just a little bit on the bottom part of it uh, to make it fit. It is very, very tight through here. You can see my motivational tools that I've been using to get it in place. Um, and I didn't want to hit it in there too hard because of course I need to back it off first to be able to apply the, uh, the adhesive. Uh, but I got that back out. We'll get it all prepped up and then one last time plop it into place. Once that's in place then I'll drill out each one of the little points. I will fill, back fill it to give it some compression strength there and then re-drill it, which will drill through the other side then too, of course, and bolt that thing together. But the bolts aren't really what's holding it. It's going to be that adhesive that holds it to this. The bolts are just there as kind of a backup. And as Matt was talking about tight when we had received the pieces back from the welder and we were doing the first fittings, um, probably saw that stage right before we bonded the cabin top, we went to go put this section in, and it was about three-eighths of an inch too large, so we had to bring that back to the welder. Uh, he was able to get it to us within a week of dropping it off, so it's actually a fairly warm day today in December. I know, we're lucky. Got the heater, you can see that too, and so um, no better time than now to get that in place. Just going to get some heat working in there right now. Drinking. Yep. Recommended is 65 degrees and above, so just heating this area one last little bit. Make sure that we get a nice temperature and we can get a full bond then. And I just want to give a shout out to our patron and Fred, Greg, for getting us that heater, which just came in a few days ago. One of the ones we had been using last winter kind of went kaput, so we were down to one, which is what I'm using nonstop in the master head to get that fared out. So we desperately needed a second one. Otherwise, we wouldn't really be able to do more than one project a day. Here is the backing plate itself, which Matt uh, is, I think, preparing to sand right now. Yeah, that's the fun with aluminum is it oxidizes so fast. And don't so we know that. Prep that surface has got to be the last thing really you do. Uh, just acetone wipe first, get any of the grease on it that I can off first. Then I'll grind this back with a 36 grit and uh, do one last little wipe real quick and then I'll be ready to go. Some of the comments last time were about the aluminum and corrosion being on a boat. This is made of 6061 grade aluminum. Same stuff that the inside of our aluminum boat was. Now this is not a marine grade, it's not one of the 5000 series like the exterior hull was, but the interior, all of the extrusions, all of the, the um, edges are all made of 6061 and that had no corrosion, had no issues whatsoever, so it does get the little oxidization on the outside of it, but beyond that, really, there's no problem whatsoever. So this does not need to be painted, doesn't need anything else to it. Just the only thing you have to do is where bolts go through, something like a tough gel or something to isolate the bolts and stainless steel um, away from the aluminum is the only thing you need to do with it. Oh my gosh. I know one of the other questions from people is when we were using the bags before, why don't you use the guns? Oh, it is incredibly tough to keep cranking that thing to get that glue out. Oh, what's happening? 
Oh my gosh, it just destroyed my... Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Okay, that's not cool. Well, that sucks. The gun broke halfway through this, so we can't complete it. Now Matt is busy scraping everything off. Remember, this is the stuff that cures like a rock in about 10 minutes, so there is no way to just kind of like move it around as we try to figure out a solution to get the rest out of the tube, so... Only one part uh, of the two-part product actually came out. Oh. As you can see, it, uh, oh. it didn't compress down on this side and just blew out my whole gun there. So, so this project is done for the day. Yeah, that's all kinds of awesome. Oh. I have no idea what happened. You're just too strong for it. Apparently. Yeah, that is not cool. Hmm. So... We got that. Okay, yeah. so uh -huh. something new to add to the wish list. Hmm. I think we found the problem. Yep, found the issue. It is rock solid in this tube. Um, apparently these were not stored properly. I just bought them. They're close to expiration date and I can guess that they weren't stored properly because it is already pre Yeah, we pre just tried cutting into it to see if we could scrape it out, and... Yeah, there's there's nothing in there. No wonder the force of the gun just... Yeah, so that's why I broke it. Yeah. Which stinks, because that's what it gets when you buy stuff off of eBay. Ugh. Done with that for today. I guess I'll go back to Farron in the Head, and Matt will hunt him the steps. Normally, I have no problem falling asleep at all. It's actually annoying for Matt how quickly I can be asleep after my head hits the pillow. But tomorrow morning, I have to get up at 5 a.m. for a flight, meaning I need to go to bed extra early tonight and I want to get a good full night's sleep, so I am turning to Beam. This is a nighttime hot chocolate drink called Dream, which helps you fall asleep quickly and stay asleep through the night. While we sleep, our bodies do a lot of repair, including to our muscles and our brain. A good night's sleep also helps with your immune system, energy levels, and improves mood. The ingredients in Dream, such as melatonin, theanine, magnesium, and reishi, will help bring you through all the cycles of sleep. There are a number of flavors to choose from, including sea salt caramel, gingerbread, and mint chip, but our favorite is the cinnamon cocoa. Adding one scoop of this to hot water will have me fast asleep within 30 to 45 minutes. Clinical studies agree that 93% of participants said that DREAM helps them get a better night's sleep. Coming into the new year, start 2024 off right by giving yourself the gift of a full and undisturbed night's sleep. Make sure you use the link in the description box below or this QR code here along with the code MJSailing and that's going to get you up to 35% off your order of BEAM and a good night's sleep. After the work of piecing together the different variants of our new helm station and having bonded it to the cabin top with thickened resin, it was time to glass it into place. To cover where the new helm station meets the cabin top, we used a single sheet of our 12 ounce double bias fiberglass, which was then gone over with a metal roller to push out all the air bubbles. Since the areas where Matt expanded the helm didn't have overlapping pieces where they were originally bonded, these received two sheets of fiberglass for extra strength.
peel pie was added over the top of the fiberglass, creating a smooth surface so it will be easier to fare and blend the two areas together. You can see behind me that I have routed out the core where each one of the winches are gonna go. In its place, I'm putting in a high density core, which is going to help with that compression once we put the winches on. Of course, those things, just a tremendous load on them because of the size of the mainsail and everything. Um, so we gotta make sure that it's gonna be very strong. These are gonna get bonded in and then glassed over multiple times to make sure that that strength is, is going to be there. And also behind those winches are going to be large aluminum backing plates as well. So we won't have any problems with that, but that is the project for today. Get those things bonded in place. And then once that's in there, I can do the final glassing from the inside and uh, wrap this project up. Getting our propane heater running in the cockpit this is a great way to heat up the bridge deck area quickly and to make sure our resin will still cure during the winter. Once Matt is done glassing, he'll switch out to an oil radiator heater placed near the helm to keep this particular spot warm. Down in the owner's hall here, looking forward, this is the master head. And today we are finally ready to turn it into something other than this strange giraffe print it looks like. Spent ridiculous amounts of time fairing and refairing, going over spots, because it wasn't as right as we thought it was the first time. But you can hear Matt down there, he's mixing up some of our high build primer and we're about ready to get a coat on. The same all quick that's on the hull side here, that light yellow. Get it sprayed on here and see if we can oh, do something with this awful mess. Unfortunately, we were running into problems with our gear once more. This time in the form of our spray guns. The first large one we normally use was giving pressure, but no paint would come out. And when we switched to our smaller 3M gun, we found out the needle was broken and it would only spit paint onto the surface. With no extra needles for our 3M gun and with paint already mixed, we decided to apply it the old fashioned way by rolling. It went on extremely light, but a little bit also went a long way. Through 96 ounces of paint, we were able to give the head three coats, and to be honest, I thought it came out looking great. Now we just have to let it cure overnight before going back to block sand it and see what areas still need attention. Stealing Matt away from this morning after he has put on a blue dye powder here in our aft guest berth. 
because now we have everything we need to do a second attempt on getting that backing plate in the forward locker. We've got new methacrylate in, a new gun in. Matt's going to go grab them from the bathroom right now, and we're going to give this a second attempt. Ooh, apparently, does mm. that need to come out? New gun in. Don't know how it works. A fancy. It is fancy. Now with better pushing action. Attempt two with the gun. That uh, works much better. Both parts pushing up equally. Yeah. When the welder got the plans, one thing it didn't show properly was the width of the deck itself. So the thickness of the deck. And so when he made it the backing plate and this front plate together and drilled them, well, he accounted for, I think it was like 10 millimeters, so three eighths of an inch. In fact, you can see how much of a difference that actually is um, for the thickness of this. So I had to go through and re-drill these, no big deal. Again, this is just acting more as a backing plate on this. Uh, what we do, we got our big bolts, and I go through and put these in. As a protectant, we're applying, I'm just using 4200, so 3M uh, 4200 on here. Normally I'd use like a Tef gel or something like that, but it's what I have, and it will be just fine for this application. So I'm just gonna butter up these edges um, all around here, get this all set, put these in, tighten them down, and that is it. Previously, I had gone through and decored this area. So the foam core in here, cut that out um, with a router bit, took that out and then filled it in with thickened resin. So that's nice and strong. Again, these are huge, massive backing plates. So really compression isn't a big issue, but what it does is it does give a little bit wider of a diameter there. So in case this is trying to push through at all, it's going to have more resistance when it's cutting through that foam. So that's the idea. because that is what's touching the aluminum.
me to pieces. Yeah, I need it. Won't you burn?